Hey guys, it's God Bars here, the self-proclaimed hip-hop historian, and this is the 248th episode of my series, where I grab a vinyl from my collection, talk about why I love it, what influence it has, and what its place is in the grand scheme of hip-hop. So when it comes to the underground Brooklyn-based duo Salad Dwellers, I, like many other 90s hip-hop fans, was first introduced to these guys through the guest appearance they had on the song For to Mind, off Sittin' on Chrome, the 1995 sophomore album by Masta Ace Incorporated. Coincidentally, Celladwellas just returned to the game earlier this year to drop their album Talk Nice, which was a collaborative effort with Tayamo Denku, and while it isn't on streaming services, they did have another album called The Last Shall Be First in 2000, which they put out under the name The Dwellers. Outside of those two, the only other studio full length these guys have put out to date is their stellar 1996 debut here, Realms in Reality, which is definitely one of my personal favorites in terms of hip-hop albums that came out that year. And that's nothing to sneeze at when you account for how many game-changing releases dropped in 96. However, despite most of the competition outshining Celladuelas in terms of sales, fame, and status, when it came to their deliveries and actual lyricism, I had their debut up there as one of the better rap albums of the year. Alongside some of my favorite slightly more high-profile classics from 96, like Jay-Z's Reasonable Doubt, Outkast's AT Aliens, UGK's Ride and Dirty, It Was Written by Nas, Tupac's All Eyes on Me, as well as the Don Caluminati The Seven Day Theory album that he dropped under the Machiavelli moniker, Redman's Muddy Waters, Mob Deep's Hell on Earth, Ghostface Killer's Iron Man, De La Soul's Stakes is High, Soul on Ice by Razkaz and Helta Skelta's Nocturnal. And that's still hardly making a dent. In fact, I chose to remove some albums from that grouping because I have to make an attempt to limit myself so I don't fall back into my usual routine where I end up basically just naming every single record in the collection. But I do like to go back every now and then to share a dozen or so albums from whatever year I happen to be discussing because that way, if you're a younger or more casual fan, you can begin to build a mental picture for what stage of development the genre was at. Like, oh, this was the year the Fugees were dominating the airwaves. Or, oh, this was the year we lost both Biggie and Tupac. Or, oh, this was the year Too Short said he was going to retire after the release of Getting It album number 10, and then proceeded to come out of retirement just three years later. But the thing with going back and researching the rap music from before your time is I feel like if you plan on delving into certain more underground 90s MCs or groups, be it CDs, Lost Boys, Group Home, Organized Confusion, or Company Flow, it's pretty important to first have some kind of ground level understanding when it comes to what was going on in the game at the time. For example, with UG and Phantasm of Cellar Dwellers, it would probably be a good idea to first familiarize yourself with something like Six Feet Deep, the debut album by Grave Diggers, who may not have been the very first hip-hop act ever to dabble with these horrorcore themes, but they were definitely the ones who brought it to the big stage and took it to another level. I wouldn't necessarily call Realms and Reality horrorcore, but it without a doubt shares some of the same elements, like haunting, dark, and atmospheric instrumentals, as well as the grimy, rugged, and personality-filled raps, which include content ranging anywhere from horror movie references to D&D-like role-playing games. I think it's really refreshing and forward-thinking how these guys weren't afraid to share their love for certain hobbies or interests just because some group of losers out there may call them nerdy or corny. And ironically, in my opinion, that confidence to express what they enjoy ends up making it not the least bit nerdy or corny. Again, whenever they do verge into that type of content. One thing I've always wondered about Celladwellas ever since I first discovered them and learned they were from Flatbush is whether they were an influence in any way on Flatbush zombies. 
who are a fellow Brooklyn-based rap group that I've discussed on the page, who formed in the early 2010s and share a lot of similarities with the Dwellas, both stylistically and aesthetically. While most of what these two acts share in common is music and content related, I also feel like both excel with vocal contrast and transitions, which is something I've always been hugely drawn to personally, especially the first couple of years when I had first started rapping, because how you come onto a song and kind of take the torch from the person before you can make or break whether the verse is going to be something you return to constantly, or if it's going to leave little to no impression. Both UG and Phantasm do a great job of complimenting each other on their debut full length here, be it thematically, flow-wise, or even with their vocal tones, and I wanted to share some lines from both talented MCs to highlight those qualities. The song I chose is Hold You Down, starting with UG who says, UG's magnificent like Morocco, used to rock flow, got to blow up so I can drive a land cruiser, choose a heavy rings and things that make society eye me and attract thugs that want to try me and stick me, my click be thick see, like Jerry Cooney, more G's than Spoonie, hands nice like Al Toons be. From the Jets, bets on dog races, sex in four places, bags drink four cases, what? Peep the scientist, me and fan roll like power man and iron fist, got shorties laying on my couch like a psychiatrist. Automatics pop like grease when you fry and fish. This ain't no game, kid, I see more fame than ten people I knew. That blue, now it's time for us to get cash too. Then Phantasm swoops in to take the mic, rapping, Ted DiBiase, the million dollar MC, check the realms in reality LP, we murder dudes mentally, bet you, out of six rhymes I'm four and better, the big pictures was a Jetta and some low sweaters, but that was years ago, now a brother no, MCs be living off this shit, and that's for real though. Had dreams of being down with the hit squad, the dwellers is forever. And now we're the shit god, if shorties hassle me, know a butch named Cassidy, call me the Sundance Kid, soon to blow and live. Full court, breakaway rims, 3Gs, in sound men, single climbing, keep a rapper shining, true indeed. My seed is the love of my life, my only son, no wife. Get nice, shoot dice, me and my man, Silky Slim and Peachy Dan, on the road to the riches. Keep the fame and the... The lone guest appearance on this thing comes from Baby, but we do have a few contributors in terms of the killer production, with the beats being done by Megahertz, Gatman, Nick Wiz, the Blues Brothers, and the Cellar Dwellers themselves. When it comes to my honorable mentions on here, I have a decent amount since there's so little fat on this LP. Including Mystic Freestyle, Advance to Boardwalk, Land of the Lost, Realm 3, Worries, Recognize and Realize, What's the Plan, Line for Line, Good Dwellers Part 2, and Outro. Then for my overall favorite tracks, I decided to leave out Hold You Down since I already read lines from it, and instead make my top three Mystic Style, Perfect Match, and Good Dwellers. Thank you for watching my 248th video. Next time we're returning over here to the West Coast to discuss a legendary gangster rap outfit I've had on the page once before. So look for that one, and if you enjoyed, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what your favorite tracks are off this Ahead of Its Time LP. Don't forget to have a great day, and I'll see you next time, okay? Look, the key to my soul is locked in the cage it opens The framework was made for my own rib cue What came first, the crack or the crack lighter Whichever one the first beam used to bring back